I'm here because the country's got big challenges. It's got big budget challenges, and increasingly it looks like it's having uh, important social challenges. One of the ways to cut through these and get people to work together is to find a priority that everyone deep inside agrees is actually the most important. And the community I work with believes that putting kids first is the way to bring this country back together again and get it focused in a way that can get it back on its feet economically and keep it there. For example, in Missouri, that nearly one million kids from birth to age mid-twenties, call them young adults, about one million of those kids are kids who don't have a high school degree, who have some criminal record, a persistent drug dependence, uh, or some health issue that would make it very difficult for them to be hired by a modern, globally competitive company. These technologically advanced companies need high school degrees, no criminal record, no persistent drug dependence. About 60% of them, or 360,000, can't be hired. These are kind of underperformers for a variety of reasons. Perhaps there were nutritional issues when they were very young. Perhaps there was abuse and neglect. Perhaps they move from house to house a lot, so they never develop the capacity to kind of attach and trust people. But in any case, for whatever reason, they fell behind when they entered school. And they then fell further behind in reading and math. And they pretty much sort of felt that by the time they were in like the fourth or fifth, sixth grade, that they were in the, the underperformer group. And they never caught up. And what we need to do is to change how society interacts with those kids, either in the very earliest years of their lives, but certainly from zero to age eight, interact with them so that whatever intellectual and other capacities they've got that God gave them naturally are fully developed. Advocates need to understand that the youth human capital of the sector of the United States is actually extremely large. The automobile sector, people think of as clearly identifiable. It's about cars. They know it's a big industry. It is big. It's 1.5% of total US GDP. It's big. But prenatal to five alone, just what people spend and what is done with kids to get them from the obstetrics office, hospital, birth, ready for school, prenatal to age five, is over three and a half percent of GDP. It's twice as large as the auto industry. Prenatal to age 18, the entire process of raising a kid from conception to high school graduation is a long process that has to be done carefully all along the way. It's more complex and more integrated than any other production process in the United States, build a jet plane, build a highway, build a bridge. None of them come close to what it is involved in raising a child to graduate, ready for, to learn, ready to go to college, or ready to take a job, team-oriented, focused. Uh, that's what you're looking for. That's the product we're producing. Prenatal 18 is 10.5% of GDP. It's bigger than the financial sector in its entirety. It's a giant sector, and it's pretty clear that if you don't have good product coming out of this economic sector, it doesn't matter what you're doing in transportation or information technology or chemistry or medical science. It doesn't matter because you do not have the people you need to be competitive. American companies, in order to be competitive, are going to move out of the United States. We have to change how we look at raising kids from the earliest years, to th at least through high school, we have to change how we look at it so we focus on the entire production process, looking at the end product, maximizing the number of kids who can be globally competitive.